Starhopper tests on June 17th. Falcon 9 shoots $1 billion into space. Falcon Heavy preparations going well and NASA testing a safer rocket fuel. And a mysterious mass detected on the moon. Welcome to another episode of What About It? Let's dive right into today's exciting news. Starhopper tests on June 17th. The sun is rising again in Boca Chica and there is no sign yet of SN05. SN05 is the version of the famous Raptor engine which will most likely be used for first hopper tests as soon as it's installed. Last week we already talked about SN04 being installed but as most of us expected this was only to see if it fits. The testing will happen with SN05. Previously, Cameron County Judge Eddie Trevino Jr. had ordered to temporarily close Highway 4 and Boca Chica Bay on June 13th, 14th and 15th. This has now been changed to June 17th, 18th and 19th. This is strong evidence of SpaceX wanting to test Starhopper before the Starship presentation on June 20th. Now I recorded this episode on June 13th and until then there was no sign of an SN5 engine mounted on the Starhopper yet. So let's cross our fingers and hope that it'll happen in the next few days. Meanwhile, the Starhopper has been tethered to the ground again. So in contrary to last week's beliefs, first tests will most likely be tethered. This makes sense as losing the hopper this early in testing would be unnecessary. So apparently SpaceX chose to minimize the risk for the hopper and the surrounding area. The launch installation is growing steadily though. SpaceX technicians have erected a metal grid. It will most likely become a windshield to protect the hopper from the latest hurricane season which started on June 1st. Also the foundation of the landing pad has been growing steadily. As SpaceX found no bedrock under the loose sandy ground in the area, they will have to use loads of concrete and ground compacting methods to make the buildings last over the years. Recently, Business Insider released a very interesting article about SpaceX's struggle to build the starport in the area. It goes into loads of details about what SpaceX has to deal with. As always, I'll put a link in the description. So this wraps it up for Starhopper. I'll let you know as soon as there's something new to report on. Falcon 9 billion dollar shot and safe landing. Probably this week's top news regarding SpaceX is the Falcon 9 launch that happened on Wednesday morning. The Falcon did it again. As stated in the last video, it was quite the launch. Radar said made it into orbit. To be precise, three of the Constellation's satellites were shot into a sun-synchronous orbit on a Falcon 9 Block 5 rocket. Vandenberg Air Force Base is known for its thick fog layers almost every morning. This is caused by warm and moist sea air hitting land at the coast, immediately condensing and producing an impenetrable thick layer of fog. So it was to be expected to have zero visibility on the ground. Sorry reporters. Fortunately though, SpaceX had cameras on the nearby hills that enabled us to get a stunning view of the rocket piercing through the fog layer. It was a sight to behold. As the rocket accelerated off the pad, it lit the fog with its ghostly glow and the morning was saved. From here on, it was a perfect launch. The rocket performed very well and propelled the $1 billion payload into orbit. On a side note, it could be that Elon trolled us. Viewers familiar with the Falcon 9's ability know that it can orient itself into any direction due to its gimbal thrusters. This means that it does not have to do a so-called roll program to reorient itself after launch into a new direction. It can just turn. As you can see clearly in SpaceX's broadcast though, the rocket did just that. It rolled. Later, everyday astronaut Tim Dodd asked Elon on Twitter about the fact that it did a roll, only to get back this message from the master himself. Fun, he says. If I was transporting the most expensive payload of the company's history ever into orbit, I wouldn't do anything unnecessary for fun. Another proof that SpaceX is just not the usual rocket company. They do things just to make it look even better. After the roll, the booster separated, pierced back through the atmosphere again and did a bullseye landing at LZ4 back in Vandenberg. Nailed it. Meanwhile, the upper stage delivered all three satellites, one, two and three and made the guys at CSA cheer. Good job and well done SpaceX and CSA. Incredible job, flawless finish. The booster is already back in the hangar awaiting refurbishment for its next mission. Falcon Heavy preparation is underway. 
The United States Department of Defense's Space Test Program 2, or STP-2, will send 24 satellites into space. Numerous science investigations will also launch aboard the rocket. An advanced atomic clock for navigation improvements. Weather satellites for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Numerous CubeSat missions. And an Air Force Research Laboratory with NASA instruments on board to research how weather and radiation in space impact spacecraft's electronics. But what about it? When can it fly and what must be done in the next 10 days? Right now, the mission is in a heavy preparation phase. Recently, the launch got delayed by two more days and is now set to launch on June 24th. Lieutenant Colonel Rose told reporters on a telecom that they are right now finishing up installation and preparations. She said that right now they're looking at probably no earlier than June 24th while they are finishing these tasks. The 4-hour launch window opens up at 11.30 pm Eastern Deviation Time. If they can't meet this window, the launch will most likely be delayed even a few days more. As on June 27th, the Air Force launches yet another rocket from Cape Canaveral Air Force Base carrying the high-frequency 5 satellite into orbit. So that window is already booked. So let's hope the integration phase passes without any major problems and we can see another Falcon Heavy fly within the next 10 days. NASA to test safer green rocket fuel in a space mission. GPIM is getting ready for testing as well. The upcoming STP-2 launch is special for multiple reasons. I already told you about the certification of used rockets for the Department of Defense in another episode. This time I'd like to talk about another reason for its importance. GPIM. But what about it? What is GPIM and why is it so important? Simply put, it is a very powerful fuel and it would replace hydrazine, one of the most toxic substances in modern spaceflight. Hydrazine is a liquid straight out of hell. It is highly flammable, heavily toxic, acidic and extremely carcinogenic. And it is great for propelling rockets. Delta II used it, Ariane 2 to 4 used it and the Indian Space Agency uses it too. Hydrazine is so toxic that handling it requires strict safety precautions. Protective suits, thick rubber gloves and oxygen tanks. This also increases the time needed to prepare a rocket for launch. And if anything goes wrong at the launch, hydrazine set free is a danger to everything around it. NASA now is working on a solution to this nasty problem. This is where GPIM comes into play. GPIM stands for Green Propellant Infusion. This non-toxic fuel is 50% denser than any traditional propellant, meaning that rockets and satellites using it will be able to go further or operate longer using GPIM. Dana Ice, executive for NASA's Technology Demonstration Missions program managing GPIM said, If it weren't for the initial risk and the inherent danger of doing something for the first time, this technology would already be in space. NASA is now stepping in to do the initial testing and proof of concept. The Falcon Heavy STP-2 mission will carry a small test satellite into orbit. Its tasks include orbit raising and spacecraft pointing. The hardware needed for GPIM has to be changed entirely. New engines, tanks, filters and valves are needed to utilize it. The test satellite will consist of a propellant tank, electronics, solar panels and a 22 newton thruster and four 1 newton thrusters to accomplish the task. Especially smaller satellite companies will benefit from this technology as it lowers cost and prolongs the lifespan of the satellite. Good job NASA and good luck with GPIM. Mysterious large mass discovered on the moon. Our moon is one of the most studied objects in the solar system. Even though we can still uncover mysteries and find new knowledge about our closest companion. Let me take you to a place you've most likely never been before. The far side of the moon. The moon always looks the same to us. Whenever you see it and wherever you see it, you will always see the same details. This is due to its tidal lock towards the earth. Gravitational forces between Earth and Moon have slowed the Moon's spin over millions of years so today it takes exactly the same time to complete a full rotation as it does to orbit the Earth. So there's one side we see and one we don't. Luckily, we humans are smart. We shot satellites around the Moon to see what's hidden behind it. Luna 3, a Russian spacecraft, slung around the Moon and basically faxed this picture back to us. Even at that low resolution though, scientists were able to see something rather incredible. The largest preserved crater in the solar system. Can't see it? Let's get a bit closer. Welcome to the South Pole Aitken Basin. 
our final destination for today's tour. It is huge, roughly 2600 kilometers in diameter and 15 kilometers deep. That's twice the height of Mount Everest. It was created in a so-called catastrophic impact event and it even gets better. Scientists under the lead of Peter B. James, assistant professor of planetary geophysics at the Baylor University, Texas, have uncovered something deep beneath the basin's surface. Imagine taking a pile of metal five times the size of the big island of Hawaii and burying it underground. That's roughly how much unexpected mass they detected. When they combined data from several NASA missions to observe Moon's gravity with lunar topography data from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, they discovered the unexpectedly large amount of mass hundreds of miles underneath the South Pole Aitken Basin. One of the possible explanations for this extra mass is that the asteroid's core that formed this crater is still embedded in the Moon's mantle. The mass is so strong it's weighing down the floor of the basin by half a mile. So it's not only the largest preserved crater in the solar system, the thing that created it is still sleeping under the crater's surface until today. Or even more exciting, we finally found the monolith. So this again wraps up today's episode of What About It? What do you think? Any predictions on when SN5 will arrive in Boca Chica? Did you watch the radar set launch as well? Will GPIM work and will we ever find out what's really beneath the surface of the Aitken Basin? As always, tell me in the comments. I want to hear your opinion. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and like because this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in making more and better content. This gives me more time to focus on what I love doing the most, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time.